Robert Hoddle was the Surveyor General of the Port Phillip District from 1837 to 1853. He is best known for the creation of the Hoddle Grid, which is the grid layout of the streets of Melbourne's Central Business District. In July 1850, he had written a footnote in a correspondence to the Commissioner for the County of Burke, James Simpson. In this footnote he said, I've often thought that it would be well to lay out a village at that location, and that location would go on to be the township of Oakley. Let's explore. A year after Hoddle's comment in 1851, Victoria was proclaimed a separate colony from New South Wales. This year also corresponded with the start of the Victorian Gold Rush and a huge influx of wealth and migration to the new colony. Just prior to this time, the area around South Yarra Creek, which is Oakley's current northern boundary, was grazed by sheep and cattle and stray animals became a huge problem. William Atkinson was tasked to operate a pound for these animals around the creek, which became known as the South Yarra Pound and the water for the pound was supplied from the creek. Many of Atkinson's neighbours leased cattle and sheep runs. They were mainly Scottish immigrants and names included Campbell, McRae, McNichol, McMillans and so the creek became better known as Scotchman's Creek. The name stuck and it remains as Scotchman's Creek today. Meanwhile Hoddle had instructed his assistants to make reserves for future townships around Melbourne. They needed to have good soil, adequate water and ease of access. By 1853, Assistant Eugene Belair surveyed the new parish of Mulgrave. It was bordered by Dandenong Creek to the east and the now current roads of Warrigal Road to the west, Wellington Road to the south and Highbury Road to the north. Hoddle had instructed his assistant Henry Foote to allow for a township of 640 acres at the South Yarra Pound, so the town of Oakley was surveyed into the Shire, but the original town was centred around the intersection of the Princess Highway and Warrigal Road. Hoddle's instruction read, measuring about five or six sections in blocks of 10 allotments, each with streets 99 feet in width, also some small portions of 10 to 20 acres, and you'll have the goodness to survey and mark the best line of road from Dandenong to Melbourne, making the width three chains. And so the town was laid out here, at the halfway point on the road between Melbourne and Dandenong. Now there are a few buildings here that date back to that old town, such as Lee Oak Hotel, which dates back to 1854, the Forrester's Arms Hotel, which was granted its licence in 1864, and the former ESNA Bank, which opened in 1883. However, there is not much in the way of a town here at all. Where are the old shops, the town hall, the services? They're not here because the town moved. But where did it go and why? Well, follow me this way, about a kilometre to the south. Before to answer that question, we'll need to talk about the railway. The main road carried a charge known as the Scotchman's Creek Toll. The road was the main route for the wood carters and drays and heavy loads tore up the road. The toll enabled the local district to pay for the repairs. People using the roads hated the tolls and there was much angst and some took it upon themselves to protest, including the burning down of toll houses. The tolls were eventually abolished and the Gardner Roads Board was dismayed that they would now need to foot the bill for the road repairs. There was however respite coming. The government had approved the building of the main Gippsland line in November 1873. In the short term the construction of the line still caused problems for the Oakley Shire Council as they calculated that drays hauling equipment to construct the line caused another £300 in damage to the roads. Four years after approval, the railway was completed, but in four unusual stages. The first stage from Sale to Morwell was opened in June 1877. The second unlinked stage from Bunyip to Oakley opened in October 1877, and the Oakley railway station was open at this time. The third stage opened in December 1877 and extended the eastern section of the line from Morwell to Moey. Finally in March 1878, the Bunyip to Moey section connected the ends of the railway and the Oakley to Sale railway was complete. There was however still a problem. As the rail terminated in Oakley, freight had to be unloaded at the station and shipped to Melbourne via carts and coaches. Bullocks and cattle were unloaded and cattle drives with mounted stockmen, the cracking of stock whips and the barking of cattle dogs were a nightly occurrence along the main road to the Melbourne markets. Coach operators queued up at Oakley station to take travellers to Melbourne and new service industries were popping up everywhere. There was pandemonium. Meanwhile, the government could not decide on how to connect the rail from Oakley to Melbourne, and at one stage there were nine separate proposals on the table. 
One plan called for the connection of the outer circle line, but residents and people using the line for freight were well against this proposal for both the extra time taken around the circuitous route and the extra fares that would go along with it. Bills were passed in government, shouted down and then deferred. Finally, in August 1878, Parliament approved the construction of a line from Oakley to South Yarra, with the missing link finally opened in April 1879. Upon the opening of the new line, the station was moved northwest to its current location. At a similar time to the construction of this railway, a local entrepreneur, William Murray Ross, was planning another new railway from Oakley to Elstonwick, known as the Rostown Railway, and based around the construction of his new Rostown sugar beet mill. The line was built, but it left Ross with crippling debt. Thus, corners were cut, poor construction techniques were rife, and this meant that the project limped along till its final demise in 1916. This story probably deserves a telling in full, so I hope to come back with a separate video on this project sometime in the near future. The Outer Circle Railway also terminated in Oakley for a short time. It opened the section from Oakley to Waverley Road and onwards to Burnley in 1890, with another line to Camberwell at the same time and an extension to Fairfield Park the following year. So for a short period in the early 1890s, Oakley was a real transport hub. The Oakley to Ashburton and Darling sections were soon closed in 1895, but other parts of this railway remain in place and parts of the Glen Waverley line and the Alamein line still run today. After the railway network was completed, a land boom around Oakley soon followed. The township experienced rapid development and the population quickly increased. The Oakley area was brought into the suburban system and fares to the city were drastically reduced. The fares were so much lower on this section of the railway that residents of Dandenong would drive their horses and carts to Oakley and stable them for the day, then travel from Oakley on the train. At that time, the daily fare from Dandenong to Oakley was about the same as a weekly fare from Oakley to Melbourne. By late 1888, there were seven new estates advertised with names like Oakley Park, the Township of Oakley, Oakley Hill, Oakley Station, and the Gem of Oakley, which boasted 62 mansion sites. By the mid-1890s, the boom was over, and Oakley had the second highest percentage of vacant homes in Melbourne at 12.5%, just shy of Northcote at 12.8%. High interest rates at the time sent many businesses to the wall, and many of the houses built in the 1880s were now being demolished and removed. By the 1900s and the 1910s though, things had settled down, but by the 1920s it was boom time once again, and Oakley's population doubled to 8,400 during this decade. One of the main contributors to this boom was the electrification of the rail line and the faster train travel that came with it. Land developers were quick to buy up and carve up even more of the surrounding market gardens to create new housing estates. Groups lobbied for more railway stations in the area, and Hughesdale was opened to the northwest in 1925 and East Oakley to the southeast in 1927. The East Oakley station was renamed Huntingdale in 1954. The Huntingdale station is technically still in the current suburb of Oakley and is not in Huntingdale at all, but that's a story for another day. The area struggled once again through the Great Depression, but in the 10 years after World War II, the population leapt once again from 14,000 to 25,000. Coming back now once again to the station, the line was duplicated from Oakley to Melbourne in 1883 and then on to Dandenong in 1891. By 1910, the station had two side platforms and a pass-through centre track. By 1915, the new station was built as well as a new platform on the south side and a fifth track to allow engines to bypass their carriages. As previously mentioned, the line was electrified to Melbourne in early 1922 and to Dandenong later that year. The Hanover Street Bridge was completed at the same time and crossed the goods yard. In 1968, the Warrigal Road crossing was also removed and an overpass was constructed in its place. In 1984, the goods yard was closed. Then, in 1995, when the Cranbourne line was electrified, trains that used to stop at Oakley now travelled straight through, and most of the remaining lines fell into disuse. In 2018, the Sky Rail was built through the three stations to the northwest of Oakley, and they used the opportunity to tie up the remaining lines in Oakley. The line on Platform 1 was removed, and Platforms 2 and 3 became Platforms 1 and 2 respectively. The old Platform 1 is technically still there, but it's now fenced off. One of the main features of the station is the Arch Project, which was completed in 1989. The project consists of pictures of 17 elderly Oakley residents illustrating their life stories and where they have come from, and 23 young Oakley residents, their shorter life histories and where they are going. 
It is also interesting to think that these younger people will now be in their late 40s or early 50s. Mainly on the northern side of the station, but also there are a few on the southern side of the bus terminals. There are so many bus routes here and it won't make great viewing to list them all in detail, so here's a quick montage. There's the 624, the 625, the 693, the 701, the 704, the 733, the 742, the 800, the 802, the 804, the 862, the 900 and the 903 there. There are no trams in Oakley, but the local authorities have been lobbying for one since the 1880s. It's interesting to note though that the Caulfield to Roval tram to pass through Oakley and the Monash Uni was announced in 2018, but was then never mentioned again. There is a small shopping centre on the north side of the station called Oakley Central, but just to the north of that is Eaton Mall. In the late 1950s, there was a huge wave of Greek migration to Melbourne and a large proportion of those people settled in Oakley. Thus, Eaton Mall is often referred to as Little Athens and there is a huge variety of Greek restaurants, cafes and stores. The alfresco dining right through the mall is hugely popular from early morning to late at night and if you can't afford a ticket to Europe, coming here is the next best thing. Grab a coffee or a meal and soak up the Mediterranean atmosphere. And you can also answer the question, how much is that doggy in the window? Walk around the streets of the town you'll find many of the historic buildings, some dating back to Victorian times, and even smart deco models. See how many murals you can find too. This one's on the side of a donut shop, and uh, this one's on a dentist, who would have thought? There's also the odd sculpture. Just on the north side of the main town area is Warrawee Park. Here they've incorporated the historic cemetery into the park and provided a large amount of historic information about the early residents. It's really well done. Allow some time to check this out. On the northern boundary of Oakley is the Scotchman's Creek Trail and this is a beautiful tree line meander. You could walk or take one of the buses there or even bring your bike. And finally, I do love a map anomaly. So here I am in Hurst Reserve. That's Ferntree Gully Road there. And on the other side of Ferntree Gully Road, that's Oakley. And on this side, that's Princess Highway. On the other side of Princess Highway, is also Oakley, but not here where I am. Where I am now, that's East Oakley. So yes, they have carved a triangular wedge out of Oakley from here to Huntingdale Road to be part of East Oakley. I have no idea as to how this came about. So if you do know, let me know in the comments. And that wraps it up for Melbourne by Transit in Oakley. Now, if you enjoyed this episode, maybe consider giving it a like. That would be marvellous. Or if you'd like to see more new and exciting places around Melbourne, then hit the subscribe button and also hit the bell button and you'll be notified every time I've got a new video out there. So in the meantime, why not get out here and have a look around Oakley? Take the bus or train, have a great time. So maybe even grab yourself a meal or a coffee, enjoy the area. And Yasu, thanks for watching.